Well, hello there. Hi, how are you? Good. It looks like it's just you and me. Well, so far. So far. Maybe they're just sleeping light. I guess. Did you get your mojo to work? No. I, um, I'm not quite sure I could try again this morning. Might as well while we're waiting on everybody. Maybe here I'll make it. You can share your screen and let's see if we can't figure okay. something out. That's a great idea. Uh, I've got it. Let me let me give it to the first stage here real quick. Uh, okay. Let me come back down. Why is it not showing me? Uh, there we are. Okay, share screen. And Mojo, Mojo. Oh, right here. The. Okay, this is what I get when I pull it up. When I hit the word login, it just flashes real quick the sign in screen, but I can't get. Whoop. All right, are you in Google Chrome? Yeah. Well, I'm in uh, Google uh, Edge. Yeah, so it doesn't see if you look right there, it tells you that it only works with Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. But you can't same, be in Edge. It does the same thing when, hold on. Um, If you minimize that and go to your home screen, go to your like your your like with turn take close out the edge and let's let's open a Chrome. No, yeah. nope, not there. Not a new tab. Just close out of there altogether. Just hit the X over there in the far right underneath our picture. Underneath our picture. Yeah, you want to close out of this 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 screen. I want you to go back to your home screen. Like if you, All right. I don't, I want I don't want to see this anymore. I want you to close this out. So there's an X up in the upper right hand corner. Okay. Or minimize. You could do that. Just hit the minus there. You have to get to Chrome, and you're not in Chrome. You're in Edge. Hello to Makia. Good morning. Hello, Aaliyah. I don't know where everybody is today. Armand was the only one here. So I was trying to help him. He's having a hard time. Armand, you can stop sharing. And when you can get out of that, then maybe you'd have to stop and share and then reshare. But we, we have to get you out of here. You're not, the Mojo apparently does not work in the Microsoft um, browser. It has to be the Chrome browser or Safari. So that was the issue. Where I said it to. Good morning. Right. Good morning. Good morning. So I, I think everybody's bailed on us today, so we'll get out of here early. But I got something exciting for you guys today um, because I was gifted with the 10 questions that Gary asks. Not only he asks his top 100 mastermind every year, but he also um, he he also um has done this. I, my coach told me yesterday that since his twenties, he keeps a notebook and he does the same exercise every year. And he's done it since he was in his twenties. So it's kind of fun. If you think about where Gary Keller's ended up, it must be an exercise. They say success leaves clues, something, something worth, worth following along with. So we're going to do that exercise before we do that to Makia, you're all ready for your vacations. Yes, I'm getting ready. I got sick yesterday. After I got my booster, I don't know if it was food poisoning or, or booster, but I'm feeling better this morning. So I'm happy yeah. for that. I did not feel good after my booster either. Oh my so. God. I almost didn't make it home. I, I, I threw up in the car. Oh, Luckily oh I had God. a bag. I had took my, oh my God. It was crazy. I was like, oh my God. I took off my coat, my shirt in the car because I was so hot. Well, you took, you took your booster and you also took something else, right? Yes, I took I for my meningitis. Yes. Yeah, so I'm like, I don't know if it was those two. Uh, or oh the mix of them. 
Oh, well, I'm glad you feel better. Better this morning. So I literally got in the bed as soon as I got home. So it was five after I had my little six bell. And then I slept all day to this morning. Well, I am glad you feel better. All right. Aaliyah, how was your week? Um, my week was, it was okay. It was okay. Okay, why just okay? Um, because I had, um, I had on my calendar more classes, but I didn't get as many classes done as I wanted to. But this week, I think I'm going to time block a little bit better. So I'm trying to time block around the children. <laughs> but that yes. Time. I, mm -hmm, nap time mm -hmm. should be call time, I would think. Diet, nap time is your lead generation. I know you're really focused on getting your classes in. The most important thing that you can be doing right now is calling everybody and make sure that they know you got your real estate license. The last thing you want to, what would happen if you found out that somebody you hadn't got around to call yet decided to sell their house and there's another sign in the yard, not yours? Right. Yeah, that would be disappointing. That would be not good. Not good. All right. Miss Melissa, how are you this morning? Did you get my text message? Oh, Melissa, if you're talking, you're muted. Oh, hi. Sorry. Yes, I will be there. Um, I need to text you for the address. Okay. Yeah, I'll send it to you. I, I'll, I'll, and I'll let you know when we get there because I okay. it, we just have to load. We're going to load at nine. We're staging a house. Tomorrow, Melissa is going to come do a YouTube video. So <laughs> I there need to clear off the space on my phone so I can take photos and videos. <laughs> awesome. How was your week? Is everybody healthy now? Um, they're with their dad. So um, they're still getting better, but I have a break now. So very good. Yeah. All right. Lakeisha, how about you? How was your week? I had a pretty good week. Um, I have a couple new clients for next year. Fabulous. How are you doing with calling all of your database and wishing them happy, happy holidays? I haven't done too well with that. Remember, what we do right now is going to affect our business when? Next year. Yeah, February, March, right? It's 90 days. So if we aren't making calls this week, then whatever week we are, 90 days from now, that could be the reason why we don't have closings. Ooh, Shelly's got a Santa card. Oh, isn't this cute? It is, but I got to tell you, I got the cutest card in the mail. Look at this one that I got in the mail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shelly sent me a Christmas card. Yeah. Is too can, can I go next? Yes. When I'm yeah. sorry, did I go cut ahead. anybody? No. Okay, good. Um, I just need to go to the post office and then I have a buyer's consult at 12. So I'm going to be running around. Um, had a good week, busy, um, sorting things out for various clients with various clients. Um, showed some property this week. I have a buyer's consult today at 12 for a guy who thinks he wants to rent, but doesn't know about the, uh, ad, the advantage of buying. So we're going to talk to him today, a lender friend of mine and I, um, still working on Christmas cards, but that's okay. Made all the cookies last night. All the presents are wrapped. The tree is half decorated. And, uh, yeah. So that's what I'm doing. Very good. I love it. Making a ton of calls this afternoon after the buyer's before my, I've got a couple Christmas parties tonight. So making lots of calls this afternoon. Oh, look at Armand. He's got a kitty cat too. My even special. It's a birthday kid. Oh, he meows. Oh, you're going to make my cats all excited. Shelly's cats and my cats are going to get all crazy. You make that thing play very often. Mine are sleeping because they're lazy. <laughs> all right, Sean Pell, how was your week? Good morning, everybody. Um, my week was, um, it was good. Um, although um, we kind of hit a snag with one of my buyers, they got approved for a lot lower than what they needed. And so now they want to rent. And I'm like, no, there's something will hit the market in, in that price range. So I have to meet with them today. 
Um, and then I'm waiting to meet with the, for so my owner waiting for her and her husband to give me a time where I can meet with them to, um, to get that appointment going. But I did do um, my CMA for them. And um, it's just been very busy week. And then um, my second career was more busier because it's getting closer to the holiday than um, real estate. So that, that gets busier at work. Okay. Um, how are you doing letting people, calling people for their happy holidays? I'm sorry. I am just real quick. Apparently Keen's message yesterday had the wrong link on it. So I am sending the link to some people who have messaged. So I don't talk and text very well. Oh, you're we fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Um, why you do that? I can tell you, um, I've made some calls for um, just say um, happy like holidays for the upcoming new year, um, but um, that's not enough. Um, so I need to make more. Hey, Makia, I don't have Kiara's uh, cell phone in my program to my phone yet, but she mm -hmm. has gone to the wrong link. Could you text okay. her the right link, please? Yes. Keen, Keen tried to pull that together yesterday in between his power going off, and I'm afraid he put the wrong link on that. So that's why. Sorry about that, Dan. Yeah, I had to find the link too. I went back to a, another email that was sent for me to get yeah, on as every, well. It, go, it takes you to a personal link. Every Sunday. I always I go to, to the Sunday class, like, well, the week at a glance. Casey and at a glance. Yeah, yeah that's. I can that's never find the other email. <laughs> One of the things I'm going to try to do in December, though, is get all the links. I Facebook or Zoom just has some requirements of what what we can and cannot do, and um, yeah. Uh, I, that's where I had to. That's where I had to go to get the link. Yeah, the glance. That's what I say. I send that every Sunday. Tell you to save it for the link. So that's mm -hmm. the best place to find me. That's always the best. So when it changes, that's where it'll show up that it changes. Okay, let's see. Who else? Armand, how did your weekend up? Did you get lots of leads from your ad? You're muted. I cannot hear you. No, I only got the one I got yesterday. Just one lead. Okay, well, it's Christmas time, so you just never know what people are doing. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that works out. All right, Dan, how'd your weekend up? Um, well, it could have been stronger. I thought I had a strong lead off of my Facebook live, live yesterday. I got an inquiry about the property, but it was someone from my, I uh, went to high school with, but uh, they actually have two brothers that are realtors. So it kind oh. of came out real quick. Well, you know what? Sometimes people don't like to mix business and pleasure, yeah. business and family. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't mark them off completely. If they had two brothers that was getting them the information, they probably wouldn't have had to reach out to you. Well, that's kind of what I was thinking. <clears throat> but I just, you know, uh, well, if you have any questions, you know, hit me back up. I love it. All right. Uh, Valerie, hello, dear. How are you? Sorry about the confusion on the link. Always go to the PC at a glance. That'll tell you how to find me. How was your week? How have you been? Um, I'm okay. Just okay. Just here. Yeah. Well, I, I'm glad you're here with us today because today is going to be a good day. Um, so here's what you guys need to be. See, we need to hear from who hasn't told me how their week was. Oh, Carla, I didn't get to tell you what you asked me about. Was I ready for Oh, yes. Question? You tell me how you're but I did get. Um, so this is what I was scared of. Everybody's going to be calling me before. I leave. So I did get a, I think I told you on our meeting. So I got a listing. Uh, we're going to go live on the 27th. So when I come back for that little break time, um, so I'm going to go by and take pictures today. Um, and then someone else called that I kind of been working with um, for a minute, for a long time. <laughs> she said she's ready. So I'm meeting with her tomorrow. Okay. Yes. They come out I'm of the like, woodwork when you decide yeah. to go on vacation. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Yes. So I'm excited about that. Awesome. All right. Keisha, how about you? How was your week? Um, 
my week was um uh busy but not with any real estate stuff I mean, not with I, any real estate what were you busy with oh my gosh all my outside uh things and side things um but um I, I, but 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 I, I'm mentally I'm, I think I got it now I'm gonna I'm it. okay <laughs> and I, I have some calls I got some calls I'm getting ready to start making like right now I have a double calls to make um but yeah I mean I talked to uh I mean I did talk to one of my people that I have with the loan and the loan officer reached out and said that she got the application and she's uh, they got to work on a few credit things, but she's going to get back to me with a timeline. So, um. okay, I love it. That's it. That's it. All right, well, here's what you need for today. You need to have two pieces of paper, two blank pieces of paper, and an envelope. If you don't have an envelope handy, you can get that later. Um, but you need two blank pieces of paper. So I'm going to give you a minute. Everybody, go get two blank pieces of paper and have it in front of you. And when you have your blank pieces of paper in front of you in the reactions part, give me a thumbs up. So go to the reactions mojo and give me a thumbs up and I'll know when we're ready to move forward. Could they be a big piece of paper or a small paper? You're probably gonna need a full sheet. Okay, because I have no book paper, like small papers. I'm like, okay, I need it. No, you're gonna need a full sheet. Okay. So we're going to do two exercises today. One of the exercises that we're going to do comes from Gary Keller. It is Gary Keller's year end focusing questions that I originally knew that he gives his top 100 mastermind every year. And I got a copy of it to share with you guys. But I learned yesterday that since Gary was in his 20s, he has a notebook where he asks himself these same 10 questions ever at the end of every year. And these, the first time you do it, you may find that it's a free flowing amount of answers. It may take you a minute to focus in. This is all about knowing yourself. Um, but Gary's now, um, my coach told me that he has one or two words for each of these or just one sentence. And then he checks in every year to see how it's changed for him. So that is, that is what we're gonna be doing first today. So I'm waiting for thumbs up that you have your two pieces of paper. Melissa's got her paper. Kira's got her paper. Champelle, mm -hmm. Aaliyah. All to Makia. All right. Armand, you got paper. Armand's got his paper. Champelle, you got your paper. Shelly's got her paper. I see her thumbs. <laughs> Lakeisha, do you got your paper? Valerie? I'm actually driving. So I don't okay. Valerie, you got your paper? Awesome. All right. Here we go. So, question number one. So, write in number one. The question is there's actually two questions, two and one here. All right. Who are you? How do you define yourself? When you have this one, you can give me a heart. Are you expecting us to answer this right now? Yes. Because you know, this is something we'd be having to think about. <laughs> it may be something you have to think about, but your first answer is going to be the one that is the most telling. Okay. So you are going to answer it now, and then you can think on it later. You can journal on it later, but you have to answer it today because that is going to be the first thing that comes to your mind when you don't force it is going to be the one that's the most telling for you. Okay.
who are you? How do you define yourself? And when you have, when you have your answer, give me the heart. So I know we're ready to move on to the next question. Getting in the car, so I'm good. Okay. Shelly, Lakeisha, I will post these questions as well. Yeah. I'll put them in an email to you guys when I send the video out for this. So you'll have them. And I'm gonna watch the I'm gonna watch the video, so it'll be all right. Hey, while everybody's doing that, um, mm. so you have you heard from Keen? Yes, Keen is his message to me, like, because he sent that message yesterday and I was really surprised. And he messaged me and said, um, an hour after texting you, the reception went out until now there still isn't a stable connection and no electricity. I'm not sure how long this will last. As for my safety goes, I'm all good. So, good. Yeah, all great. good. And then he sent me a link from like their, um, radio station that the radio station it remains off the air because of the ongoing blackout so they don't even have radio right now wow and where does he, does he live in the philippines but the island is are they having uh, storms or something uh yeah they had a super typhoon oh mm -hmm. he lives on the island of negros duma duma Ketty. Yeah, that's the name of the town. Yeah, yeah G U M A G U E T E is where he lives. Ooh. All right, no hearts yet. Who are you? How do you oh, define yourself? How are you guys doing with that? I gave a heart. It went away. There you go. Do you want us to repost our hearts? Just tell me if you're not ready. Who's not ready for me to move on? All right, we'll move on. Number two, again, it's a two-parter. Yes, I shouldn't say it's 10 questions. It's kind of more than 10. All right, number two, what do you believe? What do you hold to be true? I got one heart. Anybody else? Hmm. 
the hearts are there. They just keep disappearing. They just keep disappearing. So who's not ready to go? Armand's still working. All right, ready for the next one? Here's the next one, number three. What motivates you? What is your driving force? Shelly's right now is gasoline. Right. What motivates you? What is your driving force? And also the fact that there's only a week till Christmas and I'm not ready. Uh huh. It's crazy week till Christmas. I know time has flown by so fast, and I think because we've had the warm weather too, it's like, oh my God, is it Christmas next week? I'm not That's ready. Right, does it? Mm -hmm. it doesn't rain. Seem like it. Mm -mm. Can you imagine what we would have if this was snow instead of rain? Yes. In case anybody's interested, the IRS just notified us that the mileage rate next year is 58 and a half cents. It went up three and a half percent, huh? Wow. <laughs> yeah. They also announced yesterday that the interest rate is going to increase three times next year to correct inflation. You got buyers, you need to tell them that ASAP. Just saying. <clears throat> Any buyer in your pipeline should get that, that message. You said right. what do you say, Champel? I was you guys said it so quick. I was still writing what number three answer, but you oh. said they're gonna inflate by what? <laughs> they're gonna increase the interest rate three times next year to correct the inflation. Three okay. and a half cents. Oh, that's that's on the mileage, but the interest rate oh. is gonna adjust three times. Did they give any clues? Just that they they're gonna do it three times. They're talking a quarter point each time. What does that mean with the mileage? Do they get paid? For your the income mileage, tax? Yeah, income tax, what you can take off your taxes for miles you drove for business. Oh, okay. Yeah, All which, right, so everybody's which, got six, what six, motivates six, you, what's your driving force? You everybody ready for four? <clears throat> for four is a doozy, you ready? Why do you work so hard? When I did this with my coach, one of the things that she said to me that Gary has mentioned, and I just want you to think about this, and maybe it applies to you or maybe it does, does not, but busy is a hiding place oftentimes. Yes. So if busy is a hiding place, when you answer the question, why do you work so hard? Is it potentially that you're hiding from something? Or why do you work so hard? Maybe it's time for leverage. Or maybe why do you work so hard could be your big why. So that question could mean lots of different things.
All right, everybody got that? Why you work so hard? All right, number five, for you, when is enough enough? What's, what's fulfillment look like for you? When is enough enough? All right, is everybody still writing? When is enough enough? What does fulfillment look like for you? All right, number six. What do you require and seek control of? What do you require and seek control of? Well, I'm going to the post, post office, so I'll be back. I gotta go stand okay. in line. Be back in line. Carla, can you repeat, repeat that question? What do you require and seek control of? Besides the TV remote. <laughs> uh, this one can have some funny answers. <laughs> To stop on one channel and one channel on one. No. <clears throat> Quit surfing. Get the Santa stamps, Shelly. Santa stamps may be all gone this time of the year. Yeah, they might be. All right. What do you require and seek control of? The next one's a big one. Ready? Number seven, what do you fear? Well, that was quick, Armand. It was a one word answer. That's what Gary says. One or two words or a sentence yeah. is all it really should be when you get when you get to really know yourself. This is all about knowing yourself. Do you see that? Yeah. I was gonna say these these are like personal questions. These aren't realistic <laughs> questions. Well, Kira, dear, do you not think that your real estate business is personal? It is personal, but that's all numbers driven. If you don't know yourself and you don't know what motivates you, it's gonna impact your business. Tell you what, Gary Keller does this with his top 100 agents every year. I think that we wanna do it too, don't we? Who would like to be a Gary Keller top 100 agent? That'd be awesome. Get this from Gary and not from me. <laughs> All right, what do you fear? Everybody got your fear? Number eight, ooh, ready? This one, this one actually um, 
really rocked me up a little bit. I, this one's the next one's one I'm going to journal on for a little while. The, the next few weeks. Uh, what regrets are you trying to avoid? What regrets are you trying to avoid? that past regrets or are you trying to avoid future regrets well regrets you're when you the way i read this and it could mean something to everybody differently mm -hmm. but the way i looked at this was when i get to the end of my life what do i make want to make sure i don't regret okay. so that's what i'm trying to avoid now because okay. if we already have it in the past. It's kind of hard to avoid it. That's why I read it that way. But Some it can be regret to me is in the past, though. It's like I, yeah. I don't regret anything in the future because it hadn't happened. So I was like, oh, but you're man. trying to avoid it. What are you? You so you're trying. You're doing things to avoid having regrets in the future. I okay. guess maybe that's the way the wording would be. Okay. All right, next one. Are you seeking the meaning of life or are you seeking for a way to bring meaning to your life? Are you seeking the meaning of life or are you seeking for a way to bring meaning to your life? You're giving us the uh you got ready for the next one all right number 10 the last question who are you in the end <laughs> Who are you in the end?
All right, everybody got that? So I know to Makia, you said like this, like is a lot to take in all at once. We did this in 40 minutes or whatever, mm -hmm. 10 questions. But here's the thing. You can go back, pick ones that meant something to you. If something moved you, if something was hard to come up with an answer for, then contemplate that. Go back, journal on it, think on it. Um, I love the exercise and we're gonna do this every year because I think that by focusing in on that once a year, every year, it's gonna help us see what we said last year, what we said this year, how we grow, how we change, right? How our our trajectory changes because while Kira said this seems to be a lot about personal not a lot about business who we are impacts the business that we have right so go back and take a look at your gps take a look at your goals think about your goals let me ask you a question who do you have to be in order to achieve your goals next year so write that down at the bottom of your 10 questions. Who do you need to be next year in order to meet your goals, in order to reach your goals? All right, does everybody know who you need to be next year in order to reach your goals? Now get your second piece of paper out. And we're gonna write a thank you note. Was anybody with me last year? I'm, I'm mailing those on Monday. Was anybody with me last year and did the exercise where you wrote yourself a note? This is my favorite exercise from Bold. My very, very favorite exercise from Bold, so. And I didn't send my note to you. Last you year, send your note to me, so you're not <laughs> no. going to get it back in the mail from me. But here's the I thing: love, but I'm so what, <laughs> what we're going to do is you are going to write a thank you note to your future self. Your thank you note is going to say, "Dear Carla, thank you for the fabulous year we've had." Okay, and then I want you to, in your note identify your goal. We hit our goal of selling however many homes or of making this much money. And this is what it's done for my life. Be very specific in this note. So think about it. If you hit your goals, how will your life change? Now I want you to visualize that and then manifest it. You're gonna write it in this note. So I want you to write in the note, thank you to yourself. I want you to identify your goal for 2022 and you're writing a, a thank you letter to yourself for meeting that goal. And then I want you to tell yourself what you did in order to meet that goal and what happened in your life because of it, right? So, you know, you consistently made your calls. You had all of the open houses you were supposed to have, whatever that is. So you're basically, you're turning your GPS into a thank you letter for the end of next year, assuming that it's already happened. And then I'm going to have, what I'm going to have you do is put it in an envelope and address it to yourself. And then those of you in the South office, um, well, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you, uh, I'm going to email you. I'm going to have you in, in Louisville. I'm going to have you give them to Joe in the Northeast office. I'm going to have you give them to Chris. If you're in the South office, I'm going to have you just put them in my mailbox. And if you're in the West office, I'm going to have you give them to Jessica Riddle. And then I will get them from each of those people. And then next year I will mail them to you. So you will get this awesome letter in the mail from yourself a year from now. So you're writing a thank you note to yourself for what you are going to accomplish in 2022. And be very, very specific because the more specific you are, the cooler it is when you read the, the note.
and if you're talking to us, you're muted. You're muted if you're talking to us. Well, good, because I was just talking and talking. I, and talking. You and looked look so animated. I was like, I think she, she's talking to us. <laughs> I was. I appreciate letting me know. Look, it happens to me too. All right. Now, what I was saying is that getting this letter is so cool. And even if what you have planned now changes, like the year that I became a coach, um, it's still really interesting to see what stayed the same. So this is a really cool exercise. Don't skip it. Um, so I hope you'll send me those letters. I won't read them, but seal them up in an envelope. I'm not going to read them. This is from you to you. This is personal. Does anybody have anything to share after these two exercises though? Make you think about anything other than Kara says it's too personal. What, 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 what does it, anything surprise you today? Anything that you wrote down surprise you? What came out of your brain when you were asking I, yourself these I questions? I enjoyed it. it. Turns out I had, I had more thought about it than um, I realized because I'm like writing a paper, a whole book over here, I guess. That's good. That's good. Sometimes when we get it out, right? If we get it out and then we read it back to ourselves, it makes a whole lot more sense than it does when it's bouncing around in our head, right? Yes. Sometimes we don't take a, take a minute to stop and, and, you know, the other thing that we need to do at this time of the year is we need to celebrate. So I want each of you to tell me what is your biggest win? What's your biggest add a girl, add a boy? What's your biggest win? What is the most what are you most proud of from 2021? I'm most proud of that I've exceeded my goals. I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of you for that too. I'm most proud of actually becoming a, a realtor because I put it off for so many years and I was like, I haven't been in school in 27 years and to take the class, the, the course and get to this point um i'm pretty excited about that i love that yes chase your goals chase your dreams i i learned this year that in order to be successful you can't just make your calls you have to contact your calls in every category your three uh what are they called uh, three uh well areas of late your, your your priorities yeah your D2, D2s, and your, and also, and most important, your follow-ups. Because if the you relationship don't follow business. Up, you don't build relationships. Yeah, that's what you're saying, Armand. It is a relationship business. We have to, we have to build relationships. Who else? Who else wants to share? What are you proud, most proud of this year? I would say it's taking the chance. Uh, I've always been in a profession where it's all about control and not a risk taker. So it's, it's really about taking a chance on yourself. I love that. So the question about control earlier, Dan, did that tell you a lot? Yeah. <laughs> For not beating myself up so uh, badly when uh, things look like a failure at first, because even though I'm you know, I set my standards way up here and then I fall short and it seems like a failure. Maybe I'm doing better at finding the, uh, the success and the positive in it and picking it up and continuing instead of just being like, well, I'm just done with it. I love that. Giving yourself a little bit of grace. You know what? The, you know, the one, the only one way to make sure we never fail. To try. Never try anything. Never try. We never try, we'll never fail. Absolutely. Yeah, fail forward. Those of you, you know that I love that because I bought a whole bunch of those notebooks. And if you've won the 12 week challenge, you've gotten one of those in the mail from me, probably the, the fail forward, fail fast and fail forward book. Cause I love it. The faster we fail, the more, the quicker we learn and the faster we move forward. All right. Who else, who else has a win? What are you most proud of this year? Who wants to share something? I'm proud that I started um, uh, more than one stream of income. <laughs> that helps me. Yes. Yeah. 
especially being a single parent, you know, and while I'm working my real estate business and gaining clients, I can still be, you know, uh, making money as well. It's been pretty tough as a single parent this year. <laughs> Multiple streams of income. I love that. Take a, take a look, you know, at your year when you're coming up on your year and see where can you add, where's the easiest place for you guys to add some passive income and other income stream? Referrals. Referrals. Yep. Yeah. And profit share. I was thinking more along profit share because really all you have to do is send your team leader a contact or send me somebody that needs to go to real estate school. Get them in your downline. You can start building profit share. Get a check on the 21st for some uh, passive income. Referrals oh, too. Close. Absolutely. Yeah. Referrals are great. What'd you say, Champelle? I said that's the plus. I, I actually did both this year because I have a referral in Vegas and um, that's getting worked. And so, and then I sent someone to you uh, to start class, but she starts in January, I guess. Yes. All right. Anybody else? What are you most proud of? Carla, I can go. Yes, ma'am. I can go. Um, I am very pleased about two different things. Uh, I haven't hit my goal of 30 yet. I'm at 25 right now. Um, I did have two properties that fell out uh, for various reasons, but I more than doubled my, uh, the amount of um, property that I sold from the previous year, I more than doubled it. So I'm very pleased about that. And I'm very pleased this week, I realized I've capped. So I'm capped through June 1st. Yay. Oh, that's exciting. Super pleased about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. so much fun. That's a raise. That's so cool. Yes. June 1st. I know, right? All right. Who else hasn't shared? What are you most proud of this year? What's your biggest win this year? Everybody has one. Everybody has to share because we I might to make sure everybody knows what their win was. It's important that we know what we're most, we have to be proud of ourselves. I am. Oh, right. oh. oh yeah. Oh, um, I think I'm most proud of, I had the courage to leave um, my last broker and come to Keller Williams. So yeah, that I feel like that's a win for me. I love that. Change is hard, right? When we have to make change, yes. even, though when we, even though we know, has anybody ever had that where I really know I need to do this, but I really hate change. So I'm just going to stay in this bad situation. Yeah. So yes, I love that courage. Fabulous. All right, Kira, you were going to say. I was going to say, um, I think my biggest win this year is uh, more so putting me first and setting boundaries and being able to do the things that I want to do. I love that. Setting boundaries, big one. Everybody needs to work on that. So being proud of doing that is a really good one. Also, you know, the, the taking care of ourselves, we have to have self-care and we have to make sure we're putting ourselves first. It's really hard to get wrapped up in what everybody else wants and forget about what we want. What's the best way we can make sure we have time in our schedule every day for ourselves? Time block. Time block. Time block, time block your personal time, right? Make sure you've blocked off that that's boundaries and putting yourself first. Make sure you have a place on your calendar that is just for you. All right, Melissa and Valerie, I think you're the last two. What are you most proud of? Hi, this is Valerie. I was able to help my sister move on from a 27 year where she felt stuck. I we love that. And three transactions, yes. right? Yes, sold, sold her main house, and... sold the house she and her husband had bought for one of her daughters to live in and bought her a new house. That is awesome. And, and what would she have done without you, Valerie? She said, I don't know what I would have done without you. Thank you so much. <laughs> was her reaction. That's a special gift, right? When we get to, we get to change lives. It's fabulous. All right, Miss Melissa, what's you most proud of this year? <laughs> so many things. <laughs> um, I took control of my health this year and lost a hundred pounds. Okay. Uh, continuing that journey for myself, 
it's hard for me to put myself first. Um, I helped my son get diagnosed and with his mental health and he is flourishing. And that was like a one or two year process. Um, stupid pandemic. <laughs> um, then also I just didn't plan to be on my own as a realtor. So I got a curveball there, but I just went ahead and did it. And it was terrifying and I'm learning and growing and doing a good job and I'm proud of myself. And that last question, what do I need to do to reach my goals? And I just put, I need to be myself. And uh, I love that. You know, if you build your business around who you are and, and not, not focus on what somebody else is, you know, it's so easy. That's that bold law, you know, don't compare your insides to other people's outsides. So Melissa, that is a huge lesson to learn is if I can just be myself and build my business around who I am, yes. then I don't have to force it. Then I'm just going, it's going to be, going to be simple. Now that's right. not to say we don't have to get out of our comfort zone. You know, you guys know that I love this. I'm going to have to, I have to switch my, my video here so that you guys can, oh, here we go. This, remember this. Oh where the magic happens in your comfort zone. Even though we set our business to be what, uh, who we are, we still have to stretch. We still have to get out of our comfort zone for the magic to happen. But it definitely needs to be something that fits with who we are, who our definition of ourselves. And I think that goes back to, you know, the questions, the 10 year questions, while they're very personal. If your business is designed around who you are, then you're going to enjoy your business. It's gonna be part of your life by design. All right, so my next question for you guys to think about is what do you need to do? I asked this question earlier. I asked you who you needed to be. Now I'm gonna ask you, what do you need to do? So what specifically do you need to do? Do you need to change? Do you need to wear, what areas do you need to grow so that you can hit your goals next year? So do you need to grow? Do you need to change? Do you need to adjust? Do you need to add leverage? What do you need to do to be the person that you identified earlier? I asked you who you needed to be to meet your goals. Now, what do you need so that that person can meet your goals? So that was your who, this is your what. What do you need that you don't have right now? Or what do you need to do that you haven't been doing to meet your goals next year. Are we writing that down or are we telling you that? You should probably do both. Okay. If you don't write it down, what happens to it? That's the question again. What do you need to do to what? What do you need to do differently or what do you need in your life to reach your goals? What do you need to do different or what do you need to get so that you can reach your goals next year? You already identified when we finish the 10 questions, who do you need to be to reach your goals? Now, what do you need? What, what do you need to change? What activity do you need to add? What activity went do you need again. to grow? what do you say, Dan? Your mic went out for a while. Maybe it was my connection. Uh-oh. All right. Well, you got the gist of it, right? What, what do you need to do differently? What do you need to add to your world? What areas do you need some growth? What do you need to change in order to reach your goals next year? Okay. Well, I need to use more leverage and time block. More leverage and time block. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you have a plan around that? Yes. I'm writing yes. it. You're writing a plan around that. <laughs> yes. What about time blogging to Mickey is your biggest challenge? Um, because I never know what's, what's gonna happen or even when I'm time blocked, someone calls me for something else and I don't know how to say no or not. I can't do it right now. So I have to be better with that. Um, especially when it comes to the daycare, I need to make sure that, okay, if I'm going there at a certain time, I'm going to go at that certain time, not earlier. 
you know, because sometimes something happened, somebody called, what are you doing today? And it's not a definite emergency, but are you coming in today? And I'm like, well, yeah, I'll be there at this time. And I make it a point to go there earlier than doing what I need to do for real estate. So I just need to be more diligent and more um, let them know that, no, I'm not available at this time. I'll be there at this time. So you have, you, you do your, what I'm hearing you say to Makia is that you, you do a really good job of time blocking. You just need to work on honoring your time block. Yes. Committing yes. to it. Yes. Committing. Following it. Yes. You said that you don't know how to tell somebody no. What, what is the script for that? To Makia, I'd like to see you at 10 o'clock today. That's in the middle of your lead generation. I have, time. An, I have an appoint, appointment. I can't come right now. So. I already have an appointment on my calendar. How about if I come at 10, 15 or 11, 15 or whatever time I have the opening for it? Yeah. And that's what I need to do is, is this, if I have an appointment, I need to make sure that that is an appointment and not that I can't waver from it and I keep wavering from it. If I said it, I have an appointment and then something else comes up, I'd be like, okay, well, I got to go to this appointment and I'll stop that. So I just have to look at it as an appointment. It is an appointment. As I'm actually seeing someone opposed to I'm just doing it whenever. Um, opposed to, oh, I think I can just do it later. When when later comes, I can't do it later or it never happens. So I just need to stick to it and say, this is my time. Love it. All right. What else did anybody else come up with? What do you need in your life? What do you need to change? What do you need to do differently? What growth do you need? What do you need in order to end the year with your goals met or succeeded? Mine is a little different. Instead of adding something, I need to stop trying to add things and just focus in on the three main goals because adding things takes me off track. So what and you need to do is you need to follow your GPS is that's what I'm hearing you say. I need to follow my GPS. Yeah. And then um, the things that are hard, I need to learn to leverage when I can afford to leverage, that's the problem right now. But um, <laughs> the hard things just pass it off so that I can focus on the things that I'm good at. I love that. Linda McKissick always says that when we do things that aren't necessarily our best, we rob someone else of being their best. Like there are things, spreadsheets, the uh, technology. I got two, I can tell you right off. If I dabble in that, if I try to do the technology or the spreadsheets, then I rob Keen from doing something that he is really good at, right? So I have to remember when I have leverage that I have to use it because if I try to do it, first of all, I'm gonna muck it up. And second of all, um, I'm robbing him of, the ability to use his gift. So think of that as well. And I will say that um, Jomi and I used each other for leverage. Um, we made a deal. She helped me with something. I'm helping her with something. And I really think that's a great idea for all of us in this group because we all have different strengths. I love that. All right, who else? What do you need to do differently? Yes, Armand? Okay. Uh... I need to become more consistent and pursue more referrals uh, and then uh, make more contacts and nurturing. I have to figure out a way of, and I've got an idea, but I've got to figure out a way of figuring out what the best time is to call. And that may mean that I may have to time block whatever 10 or 15 minutes uh, somewhere totally different or in the evening, you know, be able to break away and make a phone call uh, to be able to get a hold of somebody uh, and not just pissed off. <laughs> Excuse my language. All right. So adjust your adjusting your time block maybe you need to adjust your time block a little bit so that you could be more productive is that well, what i'm hearing need to quit uh, being as rigid in it sure i put down whatever three hours of lead generation but that doesn't mean that i can't take another 10 or 15 minutes somewhere else in the 
the day, like late afternoon or early evening, to try to get a hold of people. Uh, I need to be able to mark those too so that I know that it needs to be a late call so that when I look at my calendar to set it up for the next day or the next week, I need to know that it's a late call so that I can set it up on my time block that way. Okay, I love that. I love the plan. All right, who else? What do you need to do differently? What do you need to add to your world to meet your goals? I need next to, year? Can you hear me? Yes. I need to be more consistent with my schedule and I need to be more prepared for the day. So making sure that I'm setting my time blocks as we talked about before and then making sure that I'm always committing to those time blocks. I love that. Has anybody read? I know Tim McKee has. Has anybody read The Miracle Morning? As you make a growth plan for next year, does everybody know what a growth plan is? Yes. It, there, there's a form in your PC library, but it's pretty simple. It's just figuring out what am I, you know, Aaliyah's got a training schedule. She knows what hers is right now. So if you're brand new, you kind of have, you know what your growth plan is. It's in your 30, 60, 90. But if you, uh, if you don't, it's basically what are you going to do to move yourself forward either? And you should do this for both a professional and a personal basis. So for instance, my growth plan in February has what in it professionally for my growth? Family reunion. Family reunion, yes. So definitely put that on your uh, on your horizon. I mean, we, I think from now and forevermore, we have a gift that came from COVID, which is there are two choices for family reunion now. So if your business isn't to the point where you feel like you can go to Orlando um, and experience family reunion in person, there is a virtual version that is very, um, you know, not cost prohibitive at all. It's, it's very reasonable. So make sure that family reunion is just, just the amazing amount of information that you get. But you also want to pick some books that you want to read. And The Miracle Morning might be, it's a really short read. It's written in parable form. So it's super easy to read. But it might, uh, it might be something that would help you focus um, as far as, Kira, getting, your, getting yourself together, being prepared for your day. That's kind of what makes the miracle morning a miracle, I think. And it includes self-care, all kinds of wonderful things. All right. Anybody else? Did you, what did you identify? That what, is you, what is it that you need to add into your world in order to be the person you need to be to meet your goals next year? Nobody has anything else to share? Keisha, are you trying to share? You thinking about it? You're struggling, like maybe I want to, but I'm afraid to say it. Uh, y'all yeah. sure y'all want to hear this? I don't know which Keisha you're talking about. Either <laughs> one of you, both of you hear share. You want to hear it. <laughs> okay, I need a husband, okay? I, I need a husband to add to <laughs> everything I have going on. <laughs> um, Takesha, wait a minute this is probably inappropriate but Takesha's got one she's trying to offload maybe you want to buy that one. Oh my gosh yeah you want this one? <laughs> oh man that's funny that's very yeah. funny but I'm, I was gonna say the opposite I was gonna say I need to get rid of one that is what I need to be successful <laughs> oh, um, I need one too but I'm not right. willing to so, um, go through the dating process to try to find one so <laughs> and Melissa need leverage. Yeah. does anybody else need leverage yes <laughs> Is, isn't that just leverage? I'm just going to go on a, on a business perspective. I'm just going to call that leverage and we're going to move on from that topic. <laughs> um, I was going to say consistency. Maybe that's not as important as I guess a husband or something like that. But yeah. I say, way more you know, important. I need that, to be a little bit more consistent um, with making a schedule, keeping my tasks going, uh, being accountable to myself to make my business um, thrive. So being consistent and organized. I'm, I'm working on my organization of making sure that every system that I use, when it's time to use it, it's, it's um, lined up correctly. So, you know, 
uh, I, I got a wife, so I don't, <laughs> so you don't need a wife. <laughs> I don't know if I want, I don't know if uh, I want another wife. <laughs> so uh, I think one's enough. Uh, so besides that, you know, just this, that part of it. <laughs> so, so I, I'm hearing, consi- first, two things I hear from you, Jay. First, consistent, let's, consistency. Who here would like to have a consistent paycheck? I think everyone. Right. What does it take to have a consistent business? Consistent work. We have to do our activities consistently. And what are what are our activities that we have to be consistent on? There's five of them. Lead generation. Script practice. Script practice. Script practice. Uh, Lead generation. (laughs) Lead generation. Script practice. Uh, lead generation get <laughs> <laughs> and so lead I, I, generation I, I, script practice lead follow-up remember lead we have follow to follow up. up on our leads we have to generate new leads and we have to follow up on the leads we already have and we have to go on appointments right negotiate contracts which is a business administrative time so if we're consistent in lead generating, lead following up, script practicing, and going on appointments, then the fifth one comes. We're going to be successful. So we have to be consistent, right? Lead generation, lead follow up, script practice, and role play, going on appointments. If we're consistent on those four things, our business will be consistent. Successful. Consistent and successful. Yes, I would. I would say that consistent is successful. If I'm getting a regular paycheck, I'm going. To, for me, that would be the definition of successful. Maybe your definition of success is different, but for me, that would be my definition of success. All right. Who else? Shelly, I know you don't want a husband and you're driving. Do you, <laughs> do, you, do, you do you, do you know? Like a housekeeper, yes. a personal assistant. I mean, I don't know. My husband might be right. I don't know. I'm a little freaked out by that, but um, I'd really like a housekeeper and a personal assistant. That'd be great. Um, so yeah. Uh, and what was what was the rest of the the app? The actual question. The actual question was, what do you need to change, or what do you need to do different, or what do you need okay. to add to your world to so that you can hit your goals next year? Your monumental goals that we just added to this week. So here's, so here's, right. Uh, so I'm kind of with, uh, however, I'm also the master of like not following the schedule and doing what I want to do because while I want this structure, I also fight the structure. So um, I probably need to see somebody about that actually. But um, so one of my things this year is I'm, I want to do a better job. I'm going to do a better job of um, actually following the schedule and I want to, I'm going to um, put my lead gen in a better schedule than just super random or Okay, so being, being more specific with your lead generation. Um, and do, I want to do that weekly 411. Yeah, more intentional. It, it's on there, but I move it a lot. Because it's like I get a better offer, right? I don't like doing it when I move it. I'd rather do it in the morning. So being more specific. And then I want to look at that 411 activity uh, at the beginning of each week to be more focused. It seems to be working for these agents who are doing really, really well in my office. And I feel like that's one step to get me to my next level. Your 411 is important. It is very important. We focus a lot on the GPS because that's the plan. And I love Coach Laura this week said that I never thought of it that way. I'm all about the analogy. And she added to my analogy because my analogy is your GPS are your three routes to get to your destination, which is your goal. The 411 is the vehicle. This is how you, this is what you get in to drive to get there, right? So if you have your GPS and you don't have a 411, then you have a plan, but you have no mechanism. You have no mechanism to get to follow down the route, right? So the 411 is the is the car that drives you. It's what propels you to your goals. So you need to make sure you have it. If you haven't finished your, your GPS, like seriously, you've got to get that done. Um, and if you haven't finished your 411, 
we need to get that nailed down uh, as we close out the year. Uh, we're actually a little late. If you think about it, the year's been going on since October if we follow the 90 day rule. So we need to get that locked in. Now, where did you put your GPS? Those of you that have it done, where is your GPS now? It's in my notebook, but I need to hang it on my wall. So I did say I was going to hang it on my wall so I can see it and my 401 so I can look at my goals every day because, you know, if we don't turn to that page, we're not going to see it. Absolutely. So you need to put it somewhere where you can see it, where you see it on a regular basis. If you do your GPS and you throw it in the drawer, what's the likelihood you're going to follow the routes to get to your goal? And you might hit your goal, but it might be really, you know, you might work twice. Does anybody want to work harder or smarter? What's your smarter. choice? Harder or smarter? Harder. Smarter. smarter, right? Get your GPS out. That's the systems and models. That's your plan. Follow your plan. All right. Anybody else? What do you need to add? What do you need in your life that's going to help you get to your goals next year? What do you need to make sure that you get there? Nobody else has anything else? Can I add one thing, Carla? Yes, so I've been listening while I've been driving around. And a lot of times I find myself working hard, but I, and that's one thing I want to focus on this year is working smarter because it's super easy to get caught up in the busy. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes think I do that and I want to quit doing that. So working smarter and not harder is definitely a goal for me this year. I love that. And I, I don't know if you were on Shelly when I said this, but this was a big aha for me yesterday with my coach. Um, she said that Gary yeah. says that being busy, busyness is often a hiding place for something else. So what are we hiding from when we are super busy, right? There's a bold law that says don't mistake movement for achievement, right? Mm -hmm. Just because we're busy doesn't mean we're on the path to success. So we need to make sure we're doing the things, the activities we need to do. Do we want to talk about what those activities are again? So everybody knows what they are. Sure. It's, the, it's the lead generation, the lead follow-up, script practice and going on appointments, right? Those are the four things that we need to make sure we're the busiest on. If we're doing a bunch of other stuff, it, it isn't falling into one of those four categories. We have to stop and ask ourselves, what are we hiding from? All right. Well, it's exciting. It's a new year. Is anybody, well, tell me real quick, what are your, your um, holiday plans? Does anybody want to share your holiday plans? What are you doing? Do you have a bit, do you have a new year's tradition? What you got going on between now and January 3rd? To Makia share, this is, okay. this is, I'm going on a bucket list okay. trip. <laughs> yeah. So we're going, uh, me, my husband and my two younger boys are going to LA um, for Christmas. Um, my middle child, he'd be, how do we be? He'd be 24. His birthday is the 22nd. So we're going, uh, we're leaving on the 22nd. And so we're going to go to Universal Studios. And then a friend of ours have a, got a suite um, on Christmas Day um, for the Lakers Nets game. So we're going to go to that. Um, we're going to come back for a couple of days and then me and my husband are going to Kenya, Africa, and we will arrive on the 31st at like 10 o'clock PM. So we're trying to figure out what we're going to do for new year's when it hits there. So we actually going to have two new years because, um, new year's Eve, because the time difference. So we got to figure out where we're going to be at and what we're going to do at that time. <laughs> so we can make sure we bring in the new year. <laughs> And so we'll be in Africa until January the 11th. So yes, I'm, I'm excited about that. Oh, it's a bucket, a bucket list. Bucket yes. list. Very yes. exciting. So this is what I'm working hard for. I'm working hard and doing all the things so I can go on vacation and so I can enjoy my life. Life by design. That's what we're supposed to be working towards. We don't work for the sake of working, right? We, mm -hmm. we work for the sake of living. Yes. If you have any time when you're in, when if you have time when you're in LA, drive out to Yosemite. It's well worth the trip. Okay. All right. Anybody else? I know that's that's a hard one to follow. I'm going to uh, 
uh, my daughter is going to come down with her family and we're going to Louisville and uh, spend some time with uh, or spend the Christmas day with my uh, some of my relatives, some of my cousins, step cousins. And then uh, and then a uh, couple of days after Christmas, I'm going to start to have my teeth straightened. I've got some crooked teeth and they're starting to cause some problems. So I'm going to try to try to do something about that for a change. So I've got a battle plan on how to get that done through a dentist. But uh, uh, that's what my plans are. I haven't pl made plans for New Year's yet, but. OK, anybody else? Jay, what does the Hill Clan do for the holidays? Hey, oh, the turkey? Nothing. Um, no, we're going to actually, uh, <clears throat> like I said, I'll be a grandfather the 22nd, so we're going to be celebrating that. That's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I'm going to light my fireplace. Hopefully, I don't burn down the house. So I'm going to practice doing that over the next couple of days. Uh, and then we're going to, I'm going to barbecue. We're barbecuing for, for Christmas. Uh, since, I don't know, I haven't thought about anything for New Year's Eve quite yet. Um, today, today is my sister, well, yesterday was my sister's birthday. So we're doing a murder mystery dinner. Uh, so that's that's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's different. Yeah. Uh, but besides that, you know, just hanging out. Uh, I guess since I'm a grandfather, I got to start doing grandfather stuff. Grandfather, oh. Pops. What do you what, what do you want to be called? Pops, Papa, Grandpa? Pop, Pop. Pop, Pop. <laughs> None of that. So what are you going to be called? Grand. Grand, grand. just grand? Okay. Just okay. 100? I don't grand. know. Grand, okay. Papa Jay sounds awfully cool. Papa Jay? <laughs> yeah. Papa Jay. Get on my head. Then I might have to get a whole beard and a, and a nice little hat store wearing around the house. <laughs> <laughs> and do this all the time. Jay, is that boy or a girl? Uh, it's a boy. It's okay. a boy. It's oh, a boy. His boy. name is uh, Kingston Javon. Okay. Oh, I named that for you. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's pretty that's cool. That's nice. Your namesake. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's cool. He's, he's, he's a big boy. I think they said he's uh, about nine and a half pounds or something like Ooh, that. That's a big baby. Holy cow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's, she's not, got she's, another week to go. The that's second. We'll get here quick. Yeah. yeah, I think I might go walk her around and run some errands, look at some houses in the next few hours. So Do me a favor. Make sure before you light your fire that your flu is open. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So... You know, I paid $170 to have my fireplace inspected, and the guy was here for like 10 minutes. And all he did was open the flu about five times and said, oh, you're good. I was like, I mean, I well, he did something else, but it okay. was I could have did that. <laughs> yes, but now if it doesn't work, now you got some liability to go back on. Okay. I think we just burn the house down. You know. Oh well, no, yeah. Don't yeah. do that. Don't do that. Let's not do that. All right. Who else? Anybody else want to share what your holiday plans are? I can share. Um, so my family doesn't live here. It's just my son and me. And um, most mostly, I'm not sad about that. So um, we are in Kentucky this year, and uh, having lasagna for dinner. If anybody's interested, and my best friend has just graduated with her bachelor's degree um she felt very ashamed at being i don't know how old she is 45 maybe she felt very ashamed at not ever having finished her degree so she went back to get her degree done and we are having a graduation party new year's eve for her so oh, it's gonna awesome. be fun. Oh, fun is that great yes, yeah that is awesome i love right. it we are eating fried chicken fried <laughs> chicken okay yeah. Yeah. Yeah, is that a family tradition restaurant. or a new tradition? It's an old one. Uh, we go every year to the Iron Skillet here in mm. Indy. Love the Iron Skillet. Yeah, I love it. All right. Well, next week we um, will have uh, pretty much well 
Monday, uh, Coach Laura will be on for open office hours. I will not, but I'll see you guys in the morning for um, the morning huddle for the 12 weeks in script practice. And then I'm going to be in a leadership retreat all day. But Coach Laura will be on Monday uh, at five for open office hours. Tuesday, we will have our uh, last group coaching of the year. And I've got one-on-one scheduled with some of you guys. And if you haven't scheduled your one-on-one, if you could go ahead and get that scheduled, if you got a link from Keen, that way I can fill out my calendar for the week. Um, And then uh, I leave at noon on Thursday and I will not be back until January 3rd. So um, there's going to be abbreviated open office hours. And I'm going to make sure you guys all have Laura's uh, contact information if you need anything while I'm gone, because um, I'm probably not going to have a cell service for a lot of the, the week that we're gone. When I get back on the 3rd, then we'll be right back at it. And on the 10th, the next round of the 12 weeks to success starts. And I'm really excited about this next round. We're going to do something that's really going to be impactful and fit in everyone's GPSs one way or the other. So I'm excited about that. Um, And then we will start back with um, the Saturday workshop on the 8th. And on the 8th, we'll be launching the 12 weeks. And then following that, we're going to do the 36-12-3 that Gene Rivers mentioned in the Business Development Clinic. So we're going to do that on the Saturday workshops um, for Q1. So we're going to go through that entire class on Saturdays. So that's what we got in score. I am super excited about what 2022 is going to hold for all of you. I love the goals that you've set for yourself and your connection to the goals. Um, And I am so proud of what you accomplished this year. I am so privileged to know you and be able to work with you as you build your, your business. So I appreciate you spending time with me. And if there is nothing else that you need from me, I'm going to let you guys go early today so you can go take care of your holiday things. Yes, Dan. Uh, One thing I just wanted to let everybody know, you may want to let your sphere know, if the interest rate rises three quarters of a point next year, the home um, payment, the house payment is going to go up $42 for each hundred thousand in value. Ooh, great number. The $42,000 would be $126. Okay. And what did you House payment per month, you said? Yes, that's principal said, interest. That's from my 40, lender. That's not me creating okay, the number. Okay. Did you say forty-six dollars? Forty-two dollars. Forty-two dollars. Yeah. For every hundred thousand, for every hundred thousand dollars. So if you're buying a two hundred thousand dollar home, your mortgage payment's going to go up eighty-five dollars. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And Dan, you said that was after the end of all three yes. of the rate increases. Okay. That's correct. Now, they're, we're only guessing the three quarters. Do you think it's possible that they do the first one and it doesn't get quite the bang that they needed and the second one they go even more and the third one they go even more? Do you think it's possible, at all possible, that maybe by the end of next year we're up a whole percentage point? So, I mean, don't, I mean, it's, you know, probably the minimum is three quarters of a percent. If anybody wants a chart, I've done a chart on it. Would it still be a good time to buy then? Because I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to do that. You know how they're uh, like skeptical of that. Would well, it still be a good time to buy? Let me ask you a question. Do you think it would be better to buy now before the interest rate goes up and the mortgage payment goes up by $42 for every 100000 Or would it be better to wait and do it after the interest rate goes up and your mortgage payment went up? Well, I guess I was thinking about for people that aren't prepared right now and they want to wait till the spring. And they like have no other choice but to wait. You know what I mean? Well, if they wait till spring, then they're going to want to do it as soon as possible. So the feds are going to meet three times next year. So each of the three times they meet, they're going to increase the interest rate likely. Okay. So if you aren't ready right now, let's get, let's get you ready as quick as possible. Because if it's, if it's $42 for, let's just do, I'm not good with math in my head. You guys know this, but let's just say that if we are figuring it's $42, if it goes up three quarters of a percentage and it goes up one quarter of a percentage, how much would that be an increase to your mortgage payment? It'd be less than $20, right? It'd be somewhere between 10 and $20. What's the math, Dan? 42 divided by three? Yeah. So $14. 
So if it goes up a quarter of a percent, it's going to go up $14. So Lakeisha, it would be better that they do it as quick as possible. Do they want to pay $14 more a month, $28 a month, more a month, or $42 more a month? What's their preference? So the sooner they, the point of this is the sooner your buyers that are saying they want to wait till later, the sooner that they make a decision and move forward, the better. Also figure this out. Let's say for instance, that they have a, um, $400 prepayment uh, at lease termination, right? Let's say they have a $400 lease termination. At $42 a month, how long, how many months will it be that they have already taken care of that? 10 months, right? So less than a year. So even if they have to pay to get out of their lease to get the lower interest rate, because $42 a month, what's that? $42 a month times <coughs> 12 months in a year is $504 a year times 30, which is the number average loan 30 times that's $15,120 that the interest rate will cost them over the life of the loan. So what you have to do with your buyers is ask them questions. We know now that the feds are going to meet three times next year instead of one. And because of inflation, everybody is assuming that they are going to increase. So we know that if it increases by three quarters of a percent, that's going to increase your mortgage payment by about $40 a month. Would you like to, you know, get started so you can um, avoid that increase so you can, you know, avoid it? Uh, do we know when the feds are meeting on these topics? Wait. Oh, I don't know exactly when. You could probably Google it. Um, I could say, but would it be better just to, uh, to just, do you think that somebody's going to ask that question? Well, Is if that they asked, I wanted to have a intelligent response <laughs> well january 25th 26th march 15th and 16th are the next two according to google if you google the fed if you google the fed meeting calendar it's going to be on there okay Awesome. All right, guys, what else can we talk about today? What can I do for you? Or I'm going to let you go right. You don't forget, we still have two challenges, right? One, when you mail your Christmas cards, take a quick picture of them, send it to Keen and tell him how many you sent out. The person that sends the most Christmas cards, holiday cards, I'm going to run this through uh, the 10th of January, whoever, in case you want to send oh, out. Know, that was a thing. Okay. Instead of New Year's cards, um, $50 Amazon gift card to whoever sends the most. So send those to Keen. If you've already sent your cards and you didn't send them a picture, just send them the number that you sent and when you sent them. Um, and then the other one is make sure you're filling out your, make sure you sent Keen the snapshot of the number of contacts in your command or let him know Dan and Shelly, the number of spheres, sphere people that you have in your, your database, because we're going to compare that to the number of conversations that you had in December, because the goal was to call everybody and talk to everyone in your database. And whoever has the best ratio is getting a free registration to the virtual family reunion. So it's not too late. Make sure you enter into both of those things so you might get a prize. Um, I have something to share that I forgot to share earlier. Okay. I submitted my first um, house through the Keller Offers Program. Um, I don't know if anybody else has done that yet, but so far only one buyer is looking at it. I don't know if that's typical. Um, it's offer pads. I think um, they are, I'm awaiting their response. So that's where I'm at in the process. <laughs> oh, good. Keep us updated. Cause that's exciting. Yeah. Uh, hopefully it works out. <laughs> He's talking awesome. about the, like the Kelly mortgage. No, is uh, this some different? Okay. No, the Keller offers program. Um, I'm signed up with that. Uh, what What's the website? You do a training thing and then they certify, but they get the <laughs> offer on your property if you yeah. for your buyer for your uh, sellers. They give you an offer on the property. <laughs> it's Keller offers, so you can just go to Keller offers and find the trainings. You have to go through the training in order to be able to um, participate okay. in the program. Okay, thank you. 
you can send your sellers to Keller Offers to get an offer before you list. You can't do it once you've put it in the MLS. Yes, so mm -hmm. then I need to figure out how to get her to list with me if it doesn't work out. Because <laughs> that's not 100%. She's still meeting with other agents. Oh. Well, but you've, but you've given her the value of, look what I can do for you. I have other things that I can do for you as well. Keller yeah. Mortgage, for instance. Keller Mortgage is a really good thing um, that you can offer that other uh, agents do not offer because if somebody comes and needs help with closing costs, they don't need that help with Keller Mortgage. So you can offer that to the buyer, even if you represent only the seller. So there's lots of, you got to remember that value proposition piece. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, enjoy your holiday week, the weekend before Christmas. It is the last weekend before Christmas. It's incredibly odd. I don't know how we got here already. Hopefully next year won't go quite so fast. Yes, All um, right. Yes. I think I, well, I just got a, uh, an offer on my property. So that's pretty cool. Already. So yeah. 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 We just, we just went live with it yesterday afternoon. That's awesome. Is it a good offer? Yeah, it's pretty good. The earnest money is a little short, but it's pretty good. You can always counter it. Counter it, yeah. So, uh huh? Counter the counter the earnest money. That's what we. That's what I'm actually going to do. Counter the earnest money, and it's it's over ad, so it's cool. That's awesome because she doesn't. That way, she doesn't have to have you running over there to stay with her when she the house shows. I've been over here this morning since eight o'clock. <laughs> so I don't have to do it the rest of the day. They got like seven more showings today. So I'm going to see if they're going to go ahead and let those people see them and or we, uh, accept the offer. All right. I love it. All right. Very good. All right. Go enjoy your day. Take on the world. I will see you Monday. If you need anything, just text me. Thank you. You have an awesome Melissa, day. Melissa, I will, I will, uh, Text you the address and I'll text you when we're leaving the warehouse. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Merry yep, Christmas, Armand. everyone. You're pointing Merry at me. Christmas. Mojo. Mojo. Oh, we're going to. Oh, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Let me stop recording. I don't need that.